ambitious and motivated are words that describe you best. Then you're on the right place. This is Motivational Radio Friends from Paris with your host, Longi Ekoha. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for today again. I, as always, I bring in special guests and today is a, certainly one of the best, one of the finest, if I should say so. And she is Toki Lauton Brown. Very wonderful name. And she is a motivator, a writer, environmentalist. In fact, she's everything. Lauta, introduce yourself to us, please. I am an environmental architectural technologist and a uh, cultural economist. I am a mother, a wife, a leader, a mentor, a budget coach, um, a writer. And yeah. I think that's the list now. <laughs> okay. Wow. That was, that was really heavy already. <laughs> I have to always remember what exactly do I do again? <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Is it heavy to carry these caps along? Uh, it is, especially if I'm dealing with clients and I have to use maybe three or four different hats at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, um, exhilarating and heavy. But then I've learned over the years to delegate and my husband seems to be my personal PA, whether he likes it or not. <laughs> he must be very lucky to have you. <laughs> he complains. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, but at least I know I have him to, you know, pick up the slack each time I feel, okay, that needs to be done. And so he takes that up, which I'm totally grateful for and very appreciate very good that is very nice i mean sometimes it's very good to understand that we have diamonds with us you know <laughs> yes it's very very important to know okay so today we're going to speak about debt elimination mm -hmm. okay savings financial goals and african heritage wow tall order yes I just had to narrow it down. <laughs> Good, please. <laughs> please. Where do you start from? <laughs> is it well, through debt elimination maybe? I don't know. Yes. No, is it, is it possible? Happened. Is it possible to eliminate debt in our lives? Oh, yes, it is very possible. Our, 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 our listeners are uh, dying to hear that. Go ahead. <laughs> it is possible, but the problem with debt, uh, debt elimination is that people are not consistent and that is what, that's what creates the overbalance of excess debt and so when i work with people especially that's why the book came out and and since i've gone through the process myself 10 years ago i have been taking notes and i have been you know putting uh, putting kits together so that it becomes a step-by-step -step process in which i can then teach people how to eliminate their debt so what you're saying that the best thing to happen to anybody is experience, isn't it? Because you said you went through it before. Yes, yes, I have. Especially when my husband decided that he didn't want to be an IT consultant anymore. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be a chef. And so I, I was like... And at the time, we had three little kids. And he, come, he was the sole breadwinner. And he comes in with this news. And I'm thinking, huh? All right. So we're going from what figure to what figure. Mm -hmm. And that meant he needed to go back to college to, you know, study how to be a chef. Right. And so that meant no income for a couple of years while someone had to look after the kids. And so a lot of things went, you know, through my mind. And then I felt, okay, fine. If this is what he wants to do, then we need to figure out how we will survive during the process. And so that meant we had to divide childcare. Somebody had to work in the evening. Somebody had to work during the day. And so the kids were not, you know, the care of the kids was not compromised because of our wants or our desires or our needs. And so we worked, you know, with our debts. We worked with our budget because this included school loans, you know, excess um, expenses that weren't part of the household before. And then the income had reduced substantially as well. Mm -hmm. And so with all this in mind and over the years, because then I became political and then I said I wanted to become, you know, a local council person. Well, eventually that's where my whole playground drama was leading me to. 
And so that meant spending more than, than what's coming in. And so that you could, you could feel the tears, you could feel, you could feel the issues and the dramas that kept unfolding internally while we were working externally. You know, because if I go out to meetings and I'm being passionate, no one knows what's going on in my household. Right. All they see is me coming out and discussing my issues. And I think maybe that was why the whole playground thing became the issue. Uh -huh. Because I needed to pin whatever was going on inside on something. Right. And so a lot of families are doing exactly the same thing. But if no one sits with them, especially families, you know, on low incomes. And then I find that with more of the clients I've come to meet and to you know, get to know, I find that it's not just low income families that are going through that. It's also people on a good amount of salary that have no clue where this money is going, that have a substantial amount of credit cards, a substantial amount of loans. And recently, because of student um, loans introduced into the UK, and I also have US clients, that they don't know where this income is going. And so I sit with families. I wish somebody had sat with me. <laughs> <laughs> but I sit, I sit with families and then we figure out nothing like, you know, the whole suit thing, because most times people get uptight when they see somebody coming in with, you know, looking all professional. Mm -hmm. So, you know, very relaxed manner, sit down, discuss lifestyle, because it's from the lifestyle I get to know what sort of um, how people spend their income and it's by observation as well because sometimes we don't real we don't realize how much we spend on things that are not necessary and i find that kids having kids you spend on things that they don't necessarily need and so that's where money goes and so it's tracing where that money goes that helps me to understand what goes on in that family and understand how to reduce the debt that they have uh, accumulated. In one word, are you saying this is financial management? It is financial management, but in conjunction with lifestyle. Because you cannot manage your financials if you're not managing your lifestyle. And a lot of people get confused that managing financials means that they can't do what their hearts desire. Mm -hmm. You know, what their hearts, uh, what their desires are which is not true because you can still do what you want to do. You just need to plan for it. You can still have your um, outings. You can still go to the cinemas. You can still, you know, do your, the, um, your, your takeouts, but you do it while planning. So you don't have to have a horrible life now because you're budgeting. You can have it all if you plan for it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I preach. And I also utilize the fact that we all live within communities. So it's not necessary that we need to use money for certain things. We can always borrow. We can always that borrow, like borrow from my friend that, okay, she has this thing, maybe a steam cleaner, and I borrow from her, I use for a few days, and I return to her. I don't need to go and buy it. Yeah, but don't you think of the factor of ego ego the ego of the person if 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 i don't i don't feel fine to borrow anything from you you see because i i i mean i wouldn't understand or yeah i, don't, I wouldn't understand the way you would interpret it tomorrow if i come okay. in and say please give yes. me that i find that is an issue amongst the african communities really With, yes and i feel it's it's not the way to go because if we go back into history, if we go back into our cultures, if we go back into the African culture, what did we used to do back then? We did everything within the community. Trade by butter, isn't it? Exactly. We did everything within the community. There was nothing like competition, which I see now. And it's terrible amongst the diaspora. The whole know thy roots, I think it's becoming more crucial. As much as I've, you know, come to understand what's going on within communities, I find that even even with our financial issues, without a support network, without a support community, without a support relationship, without a support family, you cannot 
continue and we cannot continue to live the way we live do you understand wow this is this is a, a sermon according to Toki. <laughs> <laughs> that is an eye opener, I bet you that, because yeah. it really, I hope many of our listeners will really, really love this program because it's, it's, it's something else. I mean, because I've had many mm-hmm. people come on my show and I have had people who discussed uh, financial uh, planning, how mm-hmm. to become financially intelligent and all that. But then you bring another dimension into this finance thing i understand that yes community helps because especially those in diaspora like you said uh, when you look right front and left and you don't see anybody around you to help sometimes very very difficult and maybe the best place to go to is the bank and they will Mm -hmm. give you all the all the (laughs) one million papers to bring along before they give you a loan and sometimes very very difficult Yes, and it's one of the things I work towards that it's a program we started in the States and we're sort of bringing it to the UK as well, whereby you can own your home through owner finance. That means the person selling the house finances the mortgage on behalf of the person buying it. So you don't have to go through credit checks. And in the situation whereby... We can't get the owner to finance the mortgage on behalf of the buyer. We look for ways to buy the house so that people can then pay for the, well, I, do, I hate calling it a mortgage because a mortgage means debt. Mm-hmm. However, we look at it, it means debt because we cannot spend three quarters of our income for 30 years that is justifying an income for the banks for 30 years and have no money of our own after working odd hours for years. So what's the whole point of spending that amount of money on a house you're not going to stay in because you're working long hours to keep it? It makes absolute no sense. And this is where I feel the community has a role to play because if you have a 100 people in the community and everybody pulls their resources, you can, you can help one individual at a time to own their own home. And then you eliminate the banks, you eliminate in, inflation, you in, in, eliminate in interest rates, and then you keep the money in the community. And so what we do in the US, if we can't get an owner to finance, like I said, mm-hmm. we buy the house and then we put the family into the house and they pay for it some pay three years some pay five years some pay ten the the the, um the maximum i have had or i've seen is 15 years and so it reduces the payments and so that that gives the family enough time to you know work on other relationships on their family relationships on their networks on their communities have time to balance their hours and still live their life to their maximum, which is what I advocate. Can I call you Mother Teresa here? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you are sounding like her, believe that. <laughs> No, oh, really, no. really. This is, this is, this is wild. This is an eye opener. I've never heard of this kind of thing before where you would have to pull your resources. Now, how do you maybe, how do you pull the resources together? Well, that is what, that's what we need to address. Every one of us, this is what we need to address because we do not have a strong community anymore. We have been doing things on, an individual level. And so what I do is, instead of talking to one person, I prefer to talk to a group. Because when you talk to a group, you understand the dynamics of that group. You know, there's this thing we do as Africans that we do like a jaw and we do susu. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a form of pulling our resources. The only thing is that we do it for our individual benefits. benefits. Yeah, that's right. We do not do it for our community. And so we need to shift that consciousness now so that we start to do this for our communities. And then the whole, you know, there are so many houses that are dilapidated that nobody owns them, but they're inside communities. Why can't the community come together, revamp these houses, 
and use them for people in distress, families in distress in their communities. We have so much wealth within us that we are not utilizing. It is amazing the amount of houses I see that are boarded up in different communities and we all live in these communities. We all attend, you know, estate associations. We all attend, you know, the parties we go to on Saturdays. We, that is our community. Why do we spend money outside our community when we can be spending money inside our communities? When I, when I listen to you, I see two things. You, you are hammering on two things. Mm -hmm. Community yeah. and the fact that you have to spend money in that same community. Yes. And if for any reasons that community mm -hmm. do, does not have what you need, what mm -hmm. do you do? You teach them. You bring people together. You, you, you are close to somebody. You cannot be alone. Even single parents have friends. The only problem is that we do not see the wealth in the other person. We only see our own issues. For instance, I'm just going to take two random single parents. Sorry, I'm using single parents because, because I work with them all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I will take two single parents. One person maybe can't work because she doesn't have adequate childcare. Another person may have a few hours because her kids are older. So now what stops the other one using those kids coming together, sorting out some sort of childcare, both of them working together. You work nights, I work um, days, or maybe a mother is in town. I will help both of you at the same time. And so you build a network. And so when the two single parents are working, because now they've found a resource within themselves, I always say, put it in writing, just in case one person decides, I am not going to do this anymore. You have a plan B. And while you are working, start another network, start to know people, just in case anything happens, you can fall back on your new network. But the thing is that we're so complacent that when we have one person, we focus all our energy on that person, forgetting that person also has wants, needs, and desires. And that person's situation can change today, tomorrow, next tomorrow. And so we get angry and frustrated that we have been uh, betrayed. And so I understand the ego you're talking about as well, because ego comes into play in this situation as well. Because I and was almost asking if it is not utopic. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it does happen. And so we need to understand this happens. And that is why age sets in Africa worked so well. Mm -hmm. Because we had a network within our age sets. We had a network within our families. We had a network within the community. And so we could feed into any network according to whatever is happening at that particular time in our lives. So when we left our roots, when we left the whole sense of community, we lost a valuable, a valuable resource, in my opinion. I agree with you. I agree on that because uh, I think that's one of the reasons why lots of people who leave their shores, you know, the, the regional, <laughs> their villages or their towns or their countries and go to somewhere else. Mm -hmm. They lose that connection. They lose mm -hmm. the network, like you said. Mm -hmm. They lose that network. And it's very, very difficult to build it up again exactly. sometimes. But then when you move to a new place, which is what I did when I left Germany to come to Ireland, because I had an issue which I wanted to address, mm -hmm. what stopped me? What stopped me really? I had little kids. I was going with my kids to meetings. I was meeting new people. And it was a new work, new network of people and new relations I had formed, you know, by going to meetings that campaigned on my behalf during the local elections. And so we shouldn't close the doors, even though we've moved to a new place. It takes time, but the individual should be willing to reach out to new relationships and new networks. So this comes to the, the area of motivation, isn't it? Exactly. And so that's why I said, I said initially that I prefer to talk to groups because when you talk to groups, you can then start to figure out, okay, who has what strength, what, what's your strength, what's your weaknesses, what do you need help in, what, you, what do you need? And then you begin to find that, wow, oh, I can actually get this from this person and that person too can get this from me. And so it's a give and take 
thing which we don't do anymore we all take and take and take and take and forgive and forget to give to have lunjaga speak at any of your organizations activities churches schools companies or any other platform please call 081-0476-1930 or plus 336-0920-1972 or alternative or log on to www.agonlongy.com thank you